Hi, I'm Caroline from Stockport Jobs Match. And for today's Daily Reel as part of Post 16 Careers Week, I'm going to talk to you about how to make decisions, gather evidence and make an action plan to help you prepare for your next steps after school or college. So before we get started, let's think about making decisions at 16 and 18. If you're currently studying your GCSEs, the biggest independent decision you've probably had to make in your life until now is what subjects to choose. And often that decision is made for you based on what you're good at and what you enjoy. As you approach the end of secondary school, there's a whole raft of decisions to make and a far bigger selection of choices from what type of qualifications to choose, A-levels, T-levels, BTECs, NBQs or an apprenticeship, to which specific course or subjects to choose or how many, to where you'd like to study them. Once you've got through this stage, two years later, as you approach the end of college sixth form or complete your apprenticeship, there's even more decisions to make and an even wider array of choices about what comes next. You might stay on at college to study at a higher level, you might move to a HE college to study a HNC or HND. You might opt for a higher or degree apprenticeship, apply to university, move away from home. You might opt for full time or part time employment, volunteering, an internship, a gap year or even starting your own business. Now, having choices is a good thing and a lot of you may have been desperate for greater independence and a bigger say in what happens in your lives for a while but too much choice can be overwhelming. So let's have a quick look at the process of decision making and break it down into how to make informed choices about your future. So making big decisions in life requires planning, research and deliberation. It's not an easy thing to do. Some people find it easier than others, but a structured logical approach works best. That way you can look back on your choice and know that you considered all the available options and made a reasoned suggest, uh, selection. But you're also aware of the alternative options should you realise you've made the wrong decision and want to adjust your plan. Now, the first step is identifying that you need to make a decision. So uh, defining what you need to decide on and how you're going to do it. It's often the hardest part. It's really easy to keep putting this off. So set out your criteria for what's important to you when making this decision. Are you driven by an end career goal? Is there something that particularly interests you? How important are things like location, cost, environment, etc.? Then you'll need to gather relevant information about the available options. So think about what you'll need. Think about the best sources of information and how to get it. And we'll talk about this more in a moment. Then next, it's important to identify alternatives. As I mentioned, there'll be several, several possible pathways you can take at both 16 and 18. So it's important to explore all the viable options and not discount anything too early or presume that you're obviously going to go down one path or another because your friends are or because that's what's expected of you, for example. Um, over, uh, once you're feeling quite well informed about those choices, you'll then need to evaluate the available options against your initial decision making criteria. So think about how well your needs from step one would be met by each individual option. Place them in priority order based on your own value system or marking criteria. Now, you'll naturally begin to favour certain options over others, but be systematic and think about why this is. Your preferred choice should be based on the option that has the highest potential for helping you to reach your goal. Once you've weighed up all the evidence, you're ready to select the option that's right for you or a combination of these options, such as part time work and study, for example. Your options may also have a couple of different stages to them. First this, then that and so on. You're then ready to take some positive action by taking steps to implement your plan, like application forms, interviews, assessments, enrollment. And we'll come on to that shortly. The final stage is to then review your decision and make sure you feel like you've made a great choice. Let's go back a step for a moment and talk about researching your options and gathering information. OK, uh, I did talk about this briefly in my last reel about transferable skills. So start thinking about where you can go to find out more information so you fully understand what's available to you. 
At 16, we'll start with that one. At 16, your main options for further study include A-levels, T-levels, BTECs, NVQs, study programmes, traineeships, apprenticeships, or a combination of all these options. And you can find out more about these by talking to your school careers advisor, visiting websites like those on the screen, GMAX, National Careers Service, Stockport Jobs Match. You can go on college websites, prospectuses, go along to open days. You can go on apprenticeship websites websites like apprenticeships.gov.uk and get my first job and it's really important to talk to friends, family, teachers, other students, as many people as you get, can to get a broad rounded view. At 18 your main options include a degree, a HNC or HND, continuing with A levels, T levels or other types of level three qualification, a traineeship, apprenticeship, internship, work experience or volunteering, full-time or part-time employment, self-employment or short courses or pre-employment training. And I talk more about those options available to you at 18 plus that aren't going to university or HE college in the Daily Reel tomorrow on next steps at 16 and 18. You can find out more about what options are available to you at 18 plus by speaking to your college careers advisor, employer, um, work coach or mentor, um, visiting the UCAS website to learn about universities, heading off to university HE college websites, looking at their prospectuses, going to open days, using job boards like Indeed, Total Jobs, CV Library and Stockport Jobs Match to look at vacancies, or at apprenticeship websites like, as we've mentioned, apprenticeships.gov.uk and get my first job. Again, talk to friends, families, teachers and other students. You can research volunteer opportunities on the Stockport Volunteer Hub website and look for free courses on the Stockport Jobs Match website under the Training Hub. Finding out about your available options for future study or employment is an important place to start. However, you also need to start thinking early on about where these routes might lead you for a future career. You don't specifically need to know what sector, job or company you'd like to work in, although some of you might. But you should be starting to think more generally about what interests you, what you enjoy, your values, your aspirations, what you hope to achieve in life and more importantly, what you are good at. So self-discovery and self-reflection are a really essential part of that planning process and help will help you make the decision about what comes next. But not everyone finds it easy to think about what they're good at. Some people may be overconfident in their strengths, while others may not realise how good they are. Maybe you don't think you're good at anything. Maybe there are others that are better at you at certain things. Or maybe you just find the prospect of selling yourself a bit daunting. Now, either way, that's OK. Again, it can feel overwhelming until you break it down. So start by making a list of five things you either enjoy doing. This could be subjects, tasks or situations or five things you consider yourself to be good at. You can use online personality profiles or psychometric tests if that's easier. These often post certain scenarios and ask you how you would respond to give you um, a profile of where your skills lie. You can also use our activities from the, our previous reel on transferable skills to consider how you'd rank yourself against things like the Universal Skills Builder Framework and the core skills areas employers are looking for. If you struggle um, to assess your skills, there's also lots of people you could ask for feedback your teachers, course manager, employer, colleagues, classmates, friends, family members, for example. They might find it easier to highlight your strengths or provide more formal feedback on tasks, assignments or projects you've completed to tell you what they think you do well. It's really important to go through this process of self-reflection and gathering feedback because when it comes to applications and interviews, whether it be for college or sixth form, university or HE college, employment or an apprenticeship, it's not enough to simply say you're good at something. You have to be able to ev evidence it. And that brings us on to our final topic for today, gathering evidence. Now, you'll no doubt have been encouraged to start gathering evidence of your achievements from an early age, collecting certificates and badges from clubs or extracurricular activities, monitoring school reports, grades and commendations, special achievements for particular projects or coursework. But not all of this will be relevant or important for your future career. 
So when you've identified your next possible steps after secondary school or college, you also need to consider what skills, qualifications or experience you might need to pursue those options. Whilst college courses, apprenticeships, employers and universities will all have academic requirements, they'll also be looking for other skills and achievements that make you stand out as an ideal applicant. Building a portfolio of evidence beyond your academic achievements might include thinking about things like hobbies, part time jobs, work experience, online courses, volunteering, building a portfolio of your work or your online business. Once you have a source of evidence that you can draw from, um, you then need to start thinking about how you might actually describe these skills using examples on application forms in your personal statement or in your CV or in interviews. The STAR technique is a really useful tool to do this and it helps you respond to questions that require you to give an example to support your response. So the STAR technique is an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. It's a structured approach to answering behavioural interview questions, which are designed to assess how you've handled a specific situation in the past. So you begin with the S by describing the context or situation you were in, then the T explaining the task or challenge that you faced, then um, detailing the actions that you took to address the situation before concluding by discussing the positive outcome or what you learned from the experience. Um, so, for example, if you were asked to explain why you'd like to study at a particular college or uni or why you've chosen to apply for a particular course or an apprenticeship, um, for example, you'd use the STAR technique in your application form or interview as follows. S. I've always been interested in pursuing a career in medicine and from a young age I've wanted to be a doctor, so you've set the scene. Um, task to help me achieve this goal. I chose A levels in maths, biology and business and have worked really hard to achieve the predicted grades required to study at university. Action to support my application and increase my understanding of the healthcare sector. I volunteered for the past 12 months in a care home and attended an NHS careers insight day to explore different career pathways to special in. The result this has equipped me with lots of knowledge of the challenges and opportunities working in medicine, together with the practical skills in patient care and inspired my career path even more. Similarly, if the question was more skills based, this could be give me an example of a time when you've had to show initiative or work in a team. And a good example would be situation. At school, I was involved in a charity fundraising team to raise money for our school leavers disco and hoodies task. After the first term, I realised we were short on volunteers and needed to plan lots more fundraising activities to reach our target funds. Action, what you did. I took the initiative to recruit additional volunteers from my friends and classmates. I made posters explaining the costs of all the different things we'd need and suggested ways people could raise money or upcoming fundraisers they could get involved in. Result. Because of this, we enlisted another eight volunteers onto the fundraising team and organised three new activities before the end of term. Within a few months, we'd exceeded our fundraising goal and were able to buy the hoodies and lots of extra things for the event. If once you've trialled the STAR technique, you realise you're lacking evidence in certain areas, you can then create a plan of action to build skills and um, give examples to evidence them. Now, hopefully today's reel has given you lots of great information on how to make decisions, gather evidence and create a plan of action. As part of Post 16 Careers Week, there's lots of tools available to you on the Stockport Jobs Match website to help you start putting some of these ideas into practice. So you can start by downloading our Mountain Climber Worksheet. This will help you identify the key milestones you'll need to achieve your career goals step by step. So that decision making process, helping you to plan what you'll need to research or achieve, the skills, resources, grades or experience required and when you need to achieve it by. Then you can use our star interview flashcards to think about how your suitability for these milestones might be assessed on application forms or in interviews. You can use the example questions to practice how you'll give a great answer or use the blank cards to create your own questions.
And there's lots of other tools available for you to explore in our Schools and Colleges Hub, from career pathway planners to sample college application forms, tips on applying for apprenticeships or writing personal statements for uni. So be sure to have a good look round and make the most of the resources available. Thanks for watching our daily reel and be sure to check out our other reels available throughout the week. Thank you.